Hello and welcome. In this presentation I'm covering PowerView. PowerView is part of Excel and is in principle a reporting tool. For example, integrated multifaceted reports using tables, charts, maps. PowerView reports can be great tools for end users because the report can contain sliders, filters, which means users can change the report to answer questions they might wish to ask of the data. In principle, there are three versions. 1. Excel PowerView Sheets 2. SharePoint PowerView Report SharePoint Report Distribution is particularly powerful for users because geographical location becomes irrelevant. Users can view and mend regardless of place and time. On the downside, you can't bring reports published in SharePoint back into Excel. You can upload the workbook to SharePoint and allow users to amend and generate new reports. Having said this, Office 365 is changing the game because you can now view and amend Excel sheets within the browser. The next question has to be what data sources can you use? If your data can be used in Excel then you're good to go. Tables, PowerView or Power Pivot data models or SQL Server Analysis service models. To get the best PowerView you really need to utilize both Power Pivot and Power Query. What you are looking at on screen is data from Gapminder. If you saw the previous video, then you'll be familiar with how I created this using Power Query. This tool allowed me to unpivot the data and remove the majority of the database. Using Power Query, it is possible to edit the data to show results for every 5 or 10 years rather than the original yearly results. Using Power Pivot, it's possible to add data tables, then create hierarchical relationships between tables and build sophisticated data models. In an earlier presentation, you may recall the World Population Growth Workbook. I could add other publicly available databases such as income per population, life expectancy, average age population. I could then build a relationship between these data sets to answer questions which region has an aging population, how big is that population, what is the average age and the income and how long will they live. Great research questions if you're thinking of adding a new product service offering to your portfolio. PowerView visualizations help and enable end users to ask and answer questions of data, interpret and understand the data using tables, charts, maps and card and matrix layouts. Before I end this section of the video, I must add a caveat. In fact, you should be aware of a couple of factors. You can only use visualizations created in Power Pivot and or Power Map. It's not always possible to combine presentations into one place and then utilize one set of controls. Now I've completed the introduction to PowerView, let's move on to creating and using table visualization. Let's introduce you to table visualization. As you can see, I'm using familiar data worksheet, so there's no need for an explanation as to what data this worksheet holds. In the ribbon, click the Insert tab, and on the right, at the other end of the ribbon, you will see an icon to launch PowerView. Click that icon. A new window opens. It can take a while if you have a considerable size database. As you can see, this database is small, as I'm only wanting to demo basic functionality. Take a look down to Excel Worksheet tabs, and you'll see a new tab has been added labeled PowerView. As always, you can rename if you wish. Take a look up towards the top right of the window, and you'll see PowerView Fields box. Within the box are a number of fields with ticks in the box. You can untick the boxes. I'm going to remove the tick for country. As I do so, you will see on the left hand side the table display section the country list has been removed. I'm going to untick total population. I just want region to be shown. My question is a simple one. I want to know how many countries there are in regions. I place a tick in country. Looking down to the field section, I click 
the drop down for country and click count distinct. I now have a list of how many countries there are in Africa. I can increase the text size by clicking the size icon and choosing 200%. I can rename the table by double clicking here to add a title. I name it regions and countries. To the left of the table I have a filter area. I can turn that off by clicking the filters area icon in the ribbon. If I wish to remove the Power View Fields pane, I simply click the Field List icon next to Filters Area. I'm going to add the Filters Area back by clicking the associated icon. Let's say I only want to view the number of countries in Africa and Europe. Looking at the Filters section, immediately underneath that there is a View and Table. If table isn't my active choice, I click table. The first field option to edit is count of country. The second option is region. To the right is a blue icon. I click to expand the list of regions. I place a tick in Africa and Europe. As I do so, the table updates. Let's assume I want to clear that. I click the clear icon, the same one as I used to expand the region list. As you can see, relatively easy to do. In the next section I'll be showing you how you save your report. As you have no doubt assumed correctly, PowerView reports are saved in Excel. All you need to do is save the entire workbook. If you haven't previously saved the workbook, regardless of whether you click save or save as, you will initiate the save as option. You only need to do that once. From then on you just click Save. If you have set up Excel to display Save icon top left of the screen, then just click that. If not, the procedure is the same for all Office programs, File, Save or Save As. To save the workbook, I needn't return to the worksheet. If I wish, you can rename the PowerView Excel tab. Again, the same procedure as you would for an Excel worksheet. I'll name it Regions and Countries. Formatting Reports utilizes the same methodology as all Office programs. I'll click the Themes icon in the ribbon. Each theme uses a color palette and a set of fonts. So as you might expect, I'll select one theme. My report uses my theme choice. I'm going to choose Equity. You may have noticed font and color line change. Next I'm going to choose a background color by clicking the background icon. Each theme will offer a variation of background colors to match the theme chosen. In my case, darkish colors. I'm going to click the light to solid. Let's change that to dark one center gradient color. Notice the font switches to white. If you prefer, you can change the background image to your chosen choice by clicking the image icon. On the screen now is a link to map images you might like to consider using. Wherever you attain images that are not your own, do make sure you have permission to use the image. Change the background color and the map reflects your choice. Notice there is an image position icon in the ribbon. This icon allows you to tile, center or stretch an image. Alternatively, I can change the image transparency by clicking the transparency icon. Let's suppose I want to increase the font size. I can click the corner of the table and drag the table to increase the size. I can click the design tab and in the text section there are two icons, one to increase, the other to decrease the font. If I want to format number to show decimal places, I click any number in the design tab. I select the appropriate format number icon. That about wraps it up for this section. In the next section, I will cover refreshing PowerView data.
For a moment, consider your data is connected to a live data update stream. You don't want to have to start from scratch to create a new report. You don't need to. Move your mouse cursor over the report and right click and left click refresh. Alternatively, in the Power View tab, click refresh. That's it for this section. Next section, I will show you how to change a table to a matrix. Regardless of the type of visualization you create, your data's origins will have a table as its source. Once you have created your report, click the report to activate the design ribbon if it's not already active. Take a look at the design tab ribbon choices. On the left hand side is an icon called table. Click the drop down to show the available options. One is matrix. Click this and you will immediately see on the lower right hand side an additional drag box called columns has been added. The box allows me to place supplementary data to my report. Looking at my fields I'm going to drag region to title. In the values box I place total population. In the rows box I'm going to drag the year field to columns. Take a look at the top of the table and you'll see an option to navigate your data by region. For example, I'll click Europe. The data shows only countries for that region. This ends the video section. The next section will cover adding data to a visualization. Adding additional data to an existing report may be a necessity on occasions. One of the easiest ways to achieve this provided the source data table holds the necessary data is to simply drag the field over to the report. To remove it is as easy as it was to add. You simply remove the tick in the box. Alternatively, using my example, look at the rows box and left click and hold the mouse button down and drag the field out of the box. Let's suppose I want to create a separate visualization but show this within the current report. I simply select a field and drag the field over to below the current visualization. I'm going to choose the region field. Immediately to the right, the region list is shown. Next, I'm going to tick the total population in the fields box. Now I can see population total by region. I'm not keen on large numbers not showing commas. I click any figure and in the design tab I simply click the comma in the number section of the design ribbon. If I wish to rearrange the visualization presentation to suit my audience, I simply click the visualization and drag to my chosen location. Suppose my boss says I like what you've prepared but I don't like the total population title, change it to world population. I also want a text box added for the second visualization. Title should read regional population totals. The easiest way to rename a field is to simply switch to the source data worksheet and rename the column title. Next save the workbook, switch back to your Power View report. Notice you have to replace the field for the second visualization because the field has been renamed. To add it back, you have two choices. One, drag the field to the fields box or drag it over to your visualization. To add a text box, in the ribbon Power View tab, you will see an insert icon. Click the drop down. In the submenu offering, you will see a text box icon. Click this, type the text I'm going to type regional population totals. Take a look up at the ribbon and you'll see basic text editing tools to change font size or the font. You simply drag the text box to the required position. Next I'm going to apply filters.
More than likely, your users will wish to filter the data to answer very specific questions. The data model I'm working with is simple. For example, I can only filter countries by region and region by total population. Nevertheless, I'm going to assume a user wants to see results for a single visualization. What I'm about to demo, a user can do for themselves. So this is a very powerful tool for users. I'm going to start with the region by country visualization. If I hover the mouse cursor over the top right hand corner, a filter icon appears. I click this. Note the filters table section is now populated with fields used in the visualization. To increase the screen real estate, I'm going to click the filter list icon to hide the filter list. I click on region to expand the field list options. I click on Africa, Europe and Oceania. As you can see the region by population visualization remains as was. The region by country visualization has been updated. Suppose I want to filter by region the number of countries in a region. For example regions with 20 or more countries. I click the count of country to expand my options. It's different. This time, instead of a list, I'm presented with a slider. If it's numeric, you will be presented with a slider. If it's text, a list. I move the slider to select my target number. Immediately, I'm only left with Africa and Europe. I click the advanced filter icon. I can configure more advanced filter. I'm going to add 40 to the first box and in the AND drop down I choose is greater than or equal to. In the box immediately below I shall enter 40 and click apply filter. As you can see, not surprisingly, I'm only left with Africa. This is an advanced filter for region. All I need to do is click the icon. Let's look at region population visualization. I simply click the table. Again, I can add filters that only affect this table. I'm going to switch back to the first visualization and remove the filters. I click the visualization and click the clear filter icons. My next objective is to configure a filter that will change both visualizations at the same time. Take a look at the filters section and you'll see view. Click view. I need to add my field list so I click the associated ribbon icon. I'm going to drag region and year fields into the filter section. If you look at the power fields list you'll see two tables. If I utilize both tables, one for each visualization, then setting filters in view mode will only affect one table. If I wanted to add filters for the second table, I would have to utilize the associated table. As both visualizations use one table set of fields, I should demo this. I drag region from the global population to the filter view. I will drag the year to the filter view section. Next, I will expand the region filter in the same way I did previously. I click Asia, Europe and North America. Notice both visualizations have changed. This ends this video chapter. The next chapter I shall demo other PowerView visualizations and hopefully you will be joining me.